Chris, welcome to your Valentine's Sloth Painting class. In front of you, you should have your canvas, a cup of water, a paper towel, a large brush, a smaller brush. For your colors, you should have red, blue, and brown, and then black and white. You do not need to pour your colors out of your containers, but definitely keep that wax paper that was given to you in your bag so we can mix colors in later. If you do not have all those materials, not a problem. Push pause on the video and come back to us whenever you're ready. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is grab both of your brushes and then dip them into your cup of water. Stir them around and get your brushes nice and clean. And then go ahead and then just tap them onto your paper towel. We are gonna use our small brush first to create an outline with blue so we know where to stop with our blue background. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So small brush, washed and dried it. I'm gonna add a little bit to my small brush, be sure it's not dripping. And I'm gonna stop, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna start on the top of the head where the hair kind of spikes up. And it's okay if you get some on your pencil line. You wanna try to do your best to kind of stay out of the sloth shape. And I do not wanna get any blue inside of the sloth shape or the heart. So I'm just kind of staying outside and I'm dragging my small brush with my blue paint for as long as I can until it's out of paint. And come up the other way too. So, so far I have an outline above the hair and to the right of the head. This part gets a little tricky, so you want to stay on the right side of the arm. You don't want to go inside at all. You will scoop underneath, and then go above the foot. And take your time, no rush. You want to continue on underneath this foot. That kind of V shape underneath the heart and then underneath the foot. So again, I'm not going into the space at all. And I'm gonna focus on the left side of the arm and continue on all the way up. Like so. And again, take your time, but once you're done, you can go ahead and wash and dry your brush. Be sure that all the bumps are kind of smoothed out by your brush by just kind of going over it and getting it nice and smooth. And you can go ahead and wash and dry. Now we're gonna start painting all that space behind the sloth with our big brush and our blue paint. Be very careful so it doesn't drip. You can always wipe it off on your paper towel if you have too much. And I'm just gonna be going in one direction, kind of side to side. If you ever need to jump to your small brush for those smaller sections, that's absolutely fine. A nice long brush stroke so you don't see that stop and go movement. Always go over it to smooth it out. Be very careful not to get it onto the sloth. I do go a little bit over the line just so you don't see that line as much, but definitely want to stay on the outside of the sloth shape. So the closer I get, the more I kind of slow down. So if you wanted to, you could use your small brush to get into those smaller areas or just be extra careful.
I'm only going side to side so it looks nice and neat. Turn it in my way towel. Getting out all those bumps. And if you do get some on your sloth, not a problem. We're going to be painting over in just a few minutes. I'm going to let this dry as I paint the four sides and then I'll go back and give it a second coat. That second coat will get rid of the, some of that streakiness and it'll look a little bit more solid. So once you're done, go ahead and start painting the sides. I'll start with the left side and I'm just kind of painting side to side in the same way. See any bumps? over to smooth it out but I want the four sides to be painted as well so it's easier or excuse me it looks neater when you hang it up And the top and the bottom you'll be painting side to side as well. You can always uh, give the sides of your painting two coats too if you feel like you want the colors to be a little bit more solid so you don't see the white canvas as much. So two coats. Just be sure to give it some time to dry where it doesn't look so shiny anymore before you give it another coat so the paint doesn't keep moving. I'm going to layer that second coat on top. So four sides. I'm going to come back and give my background a second coat 
make sure everything looks nice and clean. You are welcome to push pause on the video. Take your time with the background. Once you're done, I would also wash and dry my big brush and maybe get a new cup of water once you're done cleaning it. But once I'm done painting the second coat and cleaning my brush, I will see you here in a bit and we can continue on with painting our sloth. All right, artists, let's continue on our sloth painting. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our small brush is really washed and dried. And we're gonna start painting our heart. But we're gonna do the same thing as we did with our background where we outline and then fill in. So I'm gonna take my small brush, a little bit of red, be sure it's not dripping off of your brush. Hold it nice and tight where the gold is so you have good control. And you can go just underneath the pencil line or, or just a little bit over it. But I'm gonna go over this side of the heart. Again, nice long lines and then this side of the heart. You want to go in towards the heart, so you don't want to paint on the paw. And you want to go in this way. And we're going to go down here. If you see any blue paint that's still wet, just do your best to avoid it. If it accidentally smears, you can just let it dry and paint over it again. You can always use white paint to white it out too. If you get a little bit of a mess up, let your mess up dry. Put white paint over it, let the white dry, and then you can go back over it with whatever color you'd like. So you're just kind of using white as a white out. I'm gonna put my small brush aside. I'll go back to it a little bit later. But now I can use my big brush to fill in the heart with all red. Be very careful. And just again, be sure you're going in one motion. It's gonna go up and down. I'll definitely do two, maybe even three coats of this red so it's really nice and bright. So I paint it, let it dry paint it again and go over my line just a little bit too to break it up so you don't see that outline too much and again if you get some on your sloth not a problem those bumps and smooth it out and once you go in there with the second or third coat you'll see less of these streakiness areas because you'll get to build some more paint on top I'm gonna let that dry and I'll go back to it in a couple minutes. While I still have red on my small brush, I'm gonna go into a little bit of white as well. I'm gonna tap some off on your paper towel so it's creating that pink with the red and white. I'm gonna outline the small area of the tongue inside and I'll fill in. Maybe get your brush a little bit wet, tap it on the paper towel at least five or six times if your paintbrush seems really dry. But if your paint is moving well, then you're good. So just a little bit of red and a little bit of white makes a nice pink. If you want it to be darker, you can go back to your uh, red. If you want it to be lighter, you can go back to your pink. Excuse me, to your white. 
And again, give this heart a couple minutes to dry and then you can go back over it. I'm gonna move on with mine, but I would definitely give mine some more time to dry and give it another coat so it looks just a little bit cleaner. You won't see those lines on it as much. Whenever you're done with the heart and the tongue, you can go ahead and wash and dry your two brushes. Swirl them around in your cup of water. a lot of red on my brush still. Sorry for the shaky table. You can even hug your two brushes like this with your paper towel so you're wrapping around your brushes all the way around. I definitely want all that red off of there. Nice clean brush. Whenever you're done with the heart and the tongue, I will go back to the heart later on and add a little white, a little streak of light, but we're gonna let that dry, of course. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start painting the nose brown. With your small brush, you just get a little bit of brown on your small brush. And again, you're gonna outline and fill in. You can use your bigger brush to fill in or your smaller brush. You guessed it, two th or three coats, because look how light this is. You can still see some of that canvas poking through. See a lot of those lines, so I'm gonna kind of move that. And then not inside of this shape right here, but on the outside, that's also gonna be brown. Let me show you how. And be very careful of any blue or red that's still shiny and wet. So do your best to avoid shiny areas. You might wanna give your painting some extra time to dry, or you can use a hair dryer if you have a hair dryer in your home. area, nice long lines. So I've went to the left, the right, and the spiky part of its hair. I'm going to start in this little dip. I'm going to go above it. I don't want to go inside that shape. It's going to be a lighter brown later on. Going around to the left. Going this way. Or you can go around the eye so I know not to paint the eye area. So again, I don't want to paint inside this shape. It's more on the outside area and not in the eye shape. And I'm going to use my bigger brush to fill it in, but you can always go back and use your smaller brush 
for those smaller areas. So I'm just gonna leave my brush with the brown on it on the side. And same thing, two, maybe three coats. It's gonna make a big difference. And I'm just kind of painting up and down. more side to side here as the, the fur kind of looks like it might turn a little bit but you won't really be able to see these lines once you go in there with the other coats and you can use your smaller brush for those smaller areas if you like Don't paint inside the eye area. There is some brown inside the mouth area, so I'm just gonna put my big brush aside, go back to my small brush and my brown paint. Just kind of make a nice little outline. Go around the tongue. So I wanna paint everything besides the tongue brown. my heart shape is a little bit more dry I can get a little bit closer to it again be very careful you might need to let yours dry a little bit longer going over those pencil lines then I can use my big brush to paint inside both of them Same with the feet. Just gonna outline. And then fill in. Again, I'm gonna give this a couple of minutes to dry and then I'll go back and I'll touch up the heart and the brown. But for the most part, this is where your brown's gonna be. And once you're done with filling in all those brown areas, uh, then you can go ahead and wash and dry your brush. But I would definitely recommend two, maybe even three coats. I'm gonna let mine dry and I'll do a couple coats and I'll come back and I'll continue on with you. 
And if you want to get a new cup of water at this time, you absolutely can. We're going to go into our lighter brown, our black, and our white. All right, see you in a bit. All right, artists, the next thing we're going to want to do is, again, make sure your brushes are nicely washed and dried. If you want to get a new cup of water, you can. Oh, excuse this pencil. Let's try this one as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and paint this area in the center with a lighter brown with a little bit of black. Let me show you how to make that mix. And you will need your wax paper to mix on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your big brush and you're gonna take a scoop of your brown, put it onto your wax paper, and then a dot of white, put it on your wax paper, and a dot of black, put it on your wax paper, and then maybe just wipe off your brush. And you're gonna make kind of like a grayish brown. Let me see if I can get a good mix. I want a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna add some white to it. So I took a scoop of each, I'm gonna add a scoop of white. Let me wipe off my brush. Let's get a good scoop of white on there. Definitely want it to be much lighter than that. Let's see here. That's a good looking mix. So I did brown, black, and two scoops of white. That's my recipe. And you can wipe off the sides of your big brush. Put it off to the side. And then you can use your smaller brush to outline and then fill in with a bigger brush in that area. So let me show you how. And if you don't like your mix, you can always go back and add more brown or black, just remember a little bit of brown and black go a long way. So again, my recipe was brown, a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and then a scoop of white. And I'm using my small brush to outline I'll use my big brush to fill in, but I can still use my small brush to get into those smaller spaces. Nice long lines. Take your time with your mixing, take your time with your outline. Make sure that red is nice and dry because we're going really close to it. Leave it a little bit on top. There we go. I'm going to even use my small brush to go around the mouth and go around the nose area. smaller space and get into that smaller space over there and over there and then I can jump to my big brush Make sure it has that gray on there everything nice and smooth going in more of an up and down direction going back to my mix 
mixed. And again, you can do two coats of this color. Just be sure to give it some time to dry before you go back. You can touch it up and get rid of some of the streakiness. got out of this space you can always use your small brush again to kind of outline it and get the get the shape back a little bit there you go. once you're done you can go ahead and wash and dry the big brush go ahead and wash and dry your small brush too you are going to continue to use this color for the nails a little bit on top of the nose but I went ahead and just kind of washed and dried my small brush just to make sure it's really clean. I'm gonna use that same mix that I had that I just used for the center of the face. And if you don't have enough, you can go back and make some more members. Um, a scoop, a little bit, a little bit, and then more white. Go back in there just a little bit with my small brush. I'm gonna add some nails. So I'm just gonna go at the ends. I'm just gonna push out one, two, Three. Be sure the brown is nice and dry. Mine is still a little bit wet, so I would usually give it a little bit more time to dry. One, two, three. So just little lines with a little bit of a curve. Nails on, on the feet are a little bit different. They go more up and down. So I'm gonna go up and down, up and down that little mini one up and down. And same for this one. I'm gonna start off small, so short. I'm gonna go to a longer one. And then another one right here. Again, you can do two coats on those. There's a little bit of a sweep on the nose. So on the top part, I'm gonna go over to the left. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a sweep. Not all the way to the right, so I'm gonna stop in the middle. And I'm gonna come around and make a little bit of a curve. and dry. Take your time on those so you have your nails on your, your hands or your the paws and the feet. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to grab my small brush, wash it and dry it, and I'm going to paint the eyes black, completely black. So I'm going to make this circle. And I'll go ahead and fill it in with my small brush too. Same with the other eye. So I'm gonna outline the shape of the circle. Nails in the circle. And I'll fill it in. Like so. If you want to add eyelashes to your sloth, you can. Be very careful. You just want to be on the tippy toes of your small brush. And then you're going to start a little bit higher up here to the right. And then you kind of come down and sweep. A little bit lower, come down and sweep. Come a little bit lower, come down and sweep. The sweep's what? Up. So you're going to sweep up just a little bit. And then same on this side. Start at the top left corner. Sweep. 
and sweet. If you mess up on lashes, which can be um, can be something that happens sometimes, you can let that black dry and then go in between it with a little bit of brown, but be sure that black is nice and dry. This next part is absolutely optional, but what we're, what we're gonna do next is outline everything. So we're gonna start with the heart and then go into the sloth. If you like your sloth the way it is, you do not have to outline it, but I wanna show you how if you do decide to. Again, small brush, black paint, maybe just a little on there. Remember the harder you push, the thicker the lines become. So you just wanna barely push. Make sure everything around it is nice and dry. You don't want to smear the black into any wet paint. can go ahead and start outlining the feet. Nice long lines, you don't wanna to push too hard. You wanna keep that brush going until it's out of paint. And if you get dry areas like this, you can always get your brush wet, tap it on your paper towel at least five or six times, and then just kinda of go over it with just a little bit of water. Be sure to tap that brush at least five or six times or it's gonna to get too watery. A little bit of water goes a long way too. You can start outlining up here. So just underneath the head, I'm gonna go on the outside Carry that brush over. I'll do the same for the other side. Brush over. And this is optional. If you feel like your sloth looked good the way it was, no problem. And we do have one more step after this. So stick with me. We could all finish together. And it comes together so much better when we outline it. This makes everything pop, especially from the background. Everything looks like it's popping forward. Let's go on the left side of the head. Keep that brush going. I kind of have a heavy hand, so sometimes my lines come out a little bit thicker than I need them to be, but that's okay.
brush is getting kind of crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip in the water, pat on the paper towel and bring it to a point. So it doesn't fray as much, doesn't open up as much. I'm gonna bring it to a nice point. And we can continue on. We're also going to outline the mouth, around the tongue, and around the nose. we outline too it really cleans up all the paint that might have gotten out of our shape Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some white. Take your time with your outline, push pause on the video if you're still working on it. Double check yourself, make sure you have some lines around the tongue, the mouth, the nose, the outline around the lighter brown, the darker brown, the heart. Be sure you don't miss any spots like this one. Be sure everything's separated with a black line so you can see each section. Once you're done, you're gonna add a little bit of white to the heart. So I'm gonna take my small brush that I just washed and dried really well. Make sure there's no black on it. You can even wrap it around with a paper towel. Make sure all sides are clean. And then I'm gonna start here to left and I'm gonna curve up and come down. We're gonna make sure that heart is nice and dry. It's almost like a rainbow line. Add a little bit glue in there. I got a little too crazy, so I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit. There we go. So I push down and then it's kind of swept at the end. Almost has a little bit of a rainbow shape to it. And then for the eyes, we're just doing two curvy lines. Small brush white paint. Again, kind of like a rainbow shape again. Over here on top. And down here on the bottom. 
another option if you don't like that look you can let it dry and um, put black over it but you can always use the back of your small brush dip it in white paint and just make a dot on the top right so you can always use the back of your small brush dip in the white and make a white dot on the top right of the eye Same thing to the other eye. Just two curvy white lines. Super cute. Artists, take your time touching things up. Remember, if a wet color touches another wet color, it's gonna mix. So sometimes you just have to let things dry before you put a color next to them. Take your time, make your sloth exactly how you like it. And thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we'll see you soon.